impromptu, oh, excuse the hair, an impromptu live um, at request. There's just a bit of a quickie of some bits that I've got today. Um, to say a big hello to Sue when she comes in, <laughs> as it was by special request. Um, yes, I've, I don't have white hairs anymore. Only because, hello. <laughs> Hi, yes, so especially for you, love. And if you're the only person that watches it, I don't mind. <laughs> um, it's good for me to keep a record. Oh, my goodness me. People have popped in. Hello, Lainey. Hello, L33 Misses. Maybe we'll get some more. You're fed up, so I can understand that. It's lovely to have you here. And if I can cheer you up, I will try to do so. You see, now, Sue, so you're very lucky because you've got lovely blonde curly hair. I am the reverse visibly and i've been really wrestling with myself today this is slightly off topic and for which i can only apologize but i'm really really wrestling with dyeing my hair because i'm getting fed up with it and it's i've got quite a few white hairs now and i'm starting to get a bit fed up with trying to trying to be not me i know that sounds a bit odd i mean i like i like my hair dark that's my normal color it's my natural color pretty much um sort of dark brown but my hair is starting to grow so that I've got quite a big stripe in the middle, which is getting whiter. Each time I have sort of over a week of hair growth after colouring it, I can start to see new hair coming through. And within two weeks, it's quite a, <laughs> quite a clear stripe. Thank you, Sue. That's very sweet. Well, it's freshly washed. So, yes, it's looking quite lush. And there's lots of it. So let's just get it out of the way. Um, I'm still in my yoga kit. So I'm wearing very leery uh, leggings because I've been to yoga, do it grey. Well, I don't need to do it grey because actually if I let it grow, it's going to be grey. Um, it's going to be near the white, actually. So I compromised. I even, I opened the dye and I was wrestling myself. And I know the time is coming. Where I'm not ashamed that my hair is changing colour. Why should I be ashamed? I mean, hell, you know, it's part of maturing and getting older. And although I've never really grown up in my heart, I, I, I don't see why I shouldn't have whatever hair colour I want. And if I have white hair, I can colour it any colour I want, if I want to, or leave it. So what I did was I came to a compromise for me. Um, because obviously when it grows out, when it's this dark, I don't want to go through all that, go to a hairdresser's, have to try and make it paler, have to try and make it look like you're not really going grey. I'm, I'm going, you know, my hair will be white. <laughs> Heather, the white it will be. Yes, it, I mean, literally, my father is snow white his hair and he has short hair and a beard um, and it's a great look so I'm kind of looking forward to having that there's still a lot of dark hair in there don't get me wrong it's, but um, the wrong kind of grey is going to make me look like I, I mean look I'm wearing grey now but I tend not to wear it right next to my face because it actually makes me look rather ill so I want the right shade of silver bright bright hair so anyway that's my personal battle with do I accept and embrace the change embrace being more mature embrace the fact that my hair doesn't want to be dark anymore um do i care what other people think not really but the process of it growing out is going to look rather strange so what i've done is i've actually just sort of colored the, the top here just this literally this bit here and i've decided that i'm going to i've got quite white sidey burnt oh, it doesn't really sharpen this camera bloody stream yard there we go I've actually got quite white side beds. I'm actually going to let those grow through and I'm going to grow, let the rest of it go and see how much I can bear it. And then um, and then stop dyeing the top. I'm, I'm going to do it my way. And if I can't bear it, I'll cover it all again and start from scratch. I'm never going to have dead short hair because I look silly in it. And I know a lot of people say cut it all off or shave your hair and it'll all come through grey um, or white or whatever. But I really can't do that. It would not be a good look for me. Silver's very in now, and you can get amazing shampoos that make it shine. And my hair is quite naturally shiny, so I'm not going to have sort of problems with texture or anything. It's just doing it. So there we go. That's my been my back of the afternoon. It also grows like bloody well fast. So I've worked out that my hair this long, or maybe down to about here, will probably take two years in total to grow. Maybe less, but I would say about two years. Um, and there's going to be a process where it's it's getting to the ends and I'm you know going to go, but I'm never going to go shorter than sort of about here because 
it's just not me. Anyway, you came for a haul, not me burbling on about my hair. Hello, Lex. Hi, Karen. <laughs> burbling on about my hair and the issues thereof. Um, right, what shall I show you first? On the pound rail, because we love a pound rail. I found, yes, one whole pound. It's a scout shirt. No scout in it, luckily. It's got some badges, though. Um, but these scout shirts, even secondhand, seem, and this one is in very good nick. I feel it's been worn on a couple of occasions. And it's not a tiny size. It does need a bit of a brush over, mind you. It's been dusty. But this is from a local scout group. Um, and it came with the scarf and, and yes, I've always wanted to say this word, woggle. <laughs> it has a woggle with it. Now, these in themselves aren't actually really worth anything because I think each different scout group seems to have its own scarf, if you like. You know, they all have different ones. But the shirt in itself could get me 20 quid, which for a pound I thought wasn't bad. I'm debating that I should take the badges off first because plainly you shouldn't really have someone else's badges on them or shirt. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear, chill. Feeling crap with the... Uh, yeah, I've been enjoying your videos, actually, Pam Girl, so be cheered up and do some more videos because they're lovely. Um, <laughs> it's uh, The rain is, yeah, it's been quite consistent today. Um, I got a good soaking as I came out from yoga, but decided I'd go to the charity shop, So, and I'm quite glad I did. That's a woggle. Yes, it is. It's a strange little thing. They're not worth it. They, you know, this is a leather one, and they're just literally a bit of braided thingy with a popper. That's the woggle. And then I presume the scarf sort of goes around that way at the front. And then you fasten it into your woggle. Um, I'm waiting on the very local scout group to announce when they're going to have their jumble sale because I really, really want to go to it. And I bet it's a weekend on the way. So, uh, right, I'm quite warm now. At some point, the door will go because my son will be banging on the door. So I may have to let him in. So you may have to talk amongst yourselves for a couple of minutes. Right, yes. <laughs> Are we <laughs> showing us yours after Lex? <laughs> yes, well, Lex has been buying as well, I, I hear. So I picked up a very boring man's suit, a very dull man's suit, but it was a princely sum of £2.50. And because it's quite a reasonable size, the trousers are 36 and the jacket is a 42 regular, it's quite nice. Full buttons, working buttons, that's how I know it's a decent one because the buttons actually undo. Um, so many, even pretty good brands, don't have working cuffs. So if you get one with working cuffs, stick it in the um, keywords because it's important and people like it for quality. This is Hackett London, so it's a pretty good make. You often see their sort of rugby shirts and stuff, which I've done right with in the past, but the, the suit itself, I thought should do well i mean I've, there's got to be 50 quid in it there might even be more but it's in very good nick it's only really good there was there were two there was another suit but it had like a little moth hole nick in the back and I'm like nah nah can't be doing with that where am i putting these over there <laughs> trying not to crease things oh necker oh what's a necker i thought that was the island that richard Branson owned. Necker. Oh, is that the um the scarf thing? Oh, excuse that noise. That squeak is my uh, my big tabby cat who likes to sit. There's this sort. We've got the sort of Velux window, and there's a massive shelf there, and he likes to plonk himself in there. So if you hear strange noises, it's not me squeaking. Just so you know. I mean, I might be getting old, but I'm not that old. Um, the sun is out in Devon now. Well, it keeps trying here, but it's all a bit hit and miss, really. Um. You're missing working properly. I know, but you, you'll manage to kind of evolve your routine around around things, around small person. Um, it takes some doing, but, you know, and it'll always be shifting as well. But you'll manage to do it because, you know, you're pretty professional about this sort of thing anyway. So, but, yeah, that sort of freedom to just get in your own headspace and do what you do, it kind of goes out the window, doesn't it, really? Does it have any other use other than holding your scarf? I don't know, Sue. So maybe you can think of one. <laughs> yeah, who knows? You need some resell therapy or retail therapy? <laughs> yeah, scarf. Great. Uh, not really the season for this. 
but I picked it up anyway because it was at the princely sum of £2.50 again. Um, I don't often pick up this brand. That's the little label. Oh, me and Stringer. There we go. It's a funny little M. And it is actually Massimo Dutti. I'm assuming. I don't know if that's how you say it. It's Italian brand. Massimo Dutti. An awful lot of this stuff doesn't seem to do very well, in spite of the fact that it's bloody expensive new. But this was A, a kind of a hound's tooth, B, a linen cotton blend. And I figured someone will go somewhere warm. Um, and it doesn't look like it's been worn much. Uh, it has strange cuff detail. In fact, one of these is still sewn together, so I'm assuming it's been barely worn. And it's just felt nice. So I thought we'll give that a go. We'll give it a go. That's a 42 regular as well. So I reckon the same person had a bit of a, a wardrobe clear out. And these poor people at this particular shop, my lovely wobbly ladies, um, are literally drowning in in donations. I was like, but if it's still in the bags, I can't buy it. So I'll keep going. Excuse the rest. I get what I always get. It's a blanket. It's it's not even the silk edged one, it but it's you know the sort of satin edge one. It's blanket blanket stitch. This is why it's called blanket stitch because they use it on a blanket. Um, but it was a nice colour, and I know this colour is quite um, sought after. People do like their pinks, and this is it cost me two pound fifty, and this is merino wool. I I'm not big on picking up any blanket unless it's got an amazing design amazing color something super about it but merino wool ones are definitely are definitely doing all right and um i have got to measure the size of this one see if it's a single or double because plainly double will be more expensive um all pure merino wool made in england supplied by anslow's high street coventry specialists in fine furnishings since 1873 apparently there we go um, I, I hope it hasn't got any moth holes. I, oh, it's very difficult to kind of open up an enormous blanket when you're right in the middle of the charity shop and it weighs a bloody ton. And I've occasionally bought them and then found they've got some kind of mysterious stain in the middle of them or, or holes. This one looks pretty good. So with winter a coming, a cosy blanket is very much the thing. And oh. Your taking's halved, Kath. Sorry, Joe. Um, and your ASP is also halved. Yeah. Well, you know, you have had other things on your mind, let's be fair. Uh, so, yeah, you can get it back up again. And it's it's a busy time. No, not today, Lex. Fair enough. Another time. Another time. 60, 60 sleeps. Ah, uh, is that until, is it really 60 sleeps till then? That's going to come around really quick, though. Yes, we'll let Lex off. We, we'll let deal. We'll let her off. <laughs> this was on the pound rail. Um, they're ski snowboard trousers, sun hats. Um, yeah, they're seeming pretty good, Nick, actually. And I will pick these up because people are thinking ahead to their ski holidays. Ski season's coming. These are ladies' ones. For some reason, there's always a plethora of pink when they make ladies' ski wear. I question why. But the outside of them's pretty good. They, they're sort of made to look a bit like denim which is kind of funky. Um, yes, I mean, honestly, why, why they can't just be unisex? I've never really understood. Anything. So it's got a little pink, pink bobble on the end of it, zip. And this is Surfanic. Oh, it's a reasonable brand. It's not the top, top brand, but Surfanic 5K in a size medium. They look like they've got a really nice long leg on them. Although that could be my imagination. Yeah, fairly long leg on them. So that could make them a bit more in demand. And for a quid, so there's probably 20 in those. Um, yeah, I don't mind getting 20 on something if I'm only paying a pound for it. I'd be a bit more miffed if I paid a fiver, because by the time you've done everything. And this is my favourite thing. This may not be being sold. It's slightly too big for me, which is deeply annoying. And I don't know if I'm going to angle you correctly to be able to show you <laughs> Why is it you decide to sort somewhere you seem to create more mess? Mm. Yes, I'm just looking into a corner over there that I'm not going to show you because that's exactly what's occurring here. Now, this really rather nice big beastie seems to have got every hair in the universe on it, which is a bit annoying. 
It cost me five English pounds. Can you tell what it is yet? It's a nice big coat. CNA. Wow, CNA. <laughs> I remember CNA. It's got nice big buttons. It's double. It's got a big collar on it. It's, um, I think it's wool blend, but it's it's by Hobbs. Yep. It's by Hobbs. It is a bit big for yours truly, but it is. Excuse the oh gold. Excuse the yoga kit. You can't really see me. It's a bit of a black cat in the coal mine, isn't it? For which I can only apologise. There we go. It is mine. It's got to be mine. It's a maxi coat. It is long enough for me. It actually is. It's it's actually a bit big. It's a 16, which is annoying because it doesn't really nip in at the waist like I need it to. But, you know, I can forgive it that, I think. It's double-breasted, military style, can be worn up like that. I always photograph them both ways, up like that. Or, or you can put the collar up and the sides down. So I, I'm kind of, I'm loving these cuffs. I like this. It did come with boneless tissues in the pocket, as I tend to find coats do. But I am so, so tempted not to be selling it. No, yeah, I might keep it for this winter and then I might throw it another time. It's very dusty. Well, sorry, but I can't find any moth holes anywhere. It's black, which is perfect for me. <coughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's my it's got me all over it really. Ow. So I'm just gonna sit on wires here. Hey, put you in a better position. Lighting is such a problem at this time of year. But anyway, oh, thank you, Andrea. It's very kind. I need, I need 37 subscribers. Yes, I'm very near near a thousand, which is extraordinary, really. Because to be honest, <laughs> I haven't really put a lot of effort in. I've got to be honest. I'm just getting back, back up, back up here. So you're buried in it. Oh, Lainey, yes. You're meant to be having to clear out earrings, your family tree. You'd be 40 odd. <laughs> Yeah, well, you, you, you've got to look at it before you make a decision about what where it's going and where you're keeping it. Oh, you had a face time. That's lovely. I'm glad your daughter's all right. Anyway, it's nice that she says hello. 37 subscribers. Yeah, maybe, maybe I can. I'm sort of half hoping before before um, the meetup. But to be fair, um, there's a lot of people doing, doing this now. And, um, yeah. I, I sort of figure that those who are watching are watching, but every now and again I get a couple of new new ones that subscribe. <laughs> oh, Kelly's in. Did I miss Kelly? I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, Kelly. Oh, dear, am I flicking up and down the CNA was central. That's you met everyone met there. Yeah, yeah. CNA, yeah, I didn't necessarily like their stuff necessarily, but it's where parents tend to think you should go for, for clothes when you were young. It's like, nah. oh, I bet it's nice and sunny out there in uh, out there in Tenerife. I wouldn't mind a bit of sunshine. I'm sort of missing. Again, one has to embrace the change of seasons, but I, yeah, missing a bit of sunshine to be fair. <laughs> hello, Mick Page. <laughs> not, I, I may have seen you in here before. I may not, but hello and welcome. Nonetheless, you plug me on Insta. The thing is, I don't, I don't really do Insta. I, I, it's a time thing. Um, it is purely time. I find that between Facebook messaging all the groups I belong to and all the people I chat to, I would seriously disappear down a rabbit hole and never be seen again. Um, and I certainly wouldn't get any work done. So that's the reason I'm not on Insta. I think it's brilliant, but it's just, yeah, it's too much of a distraction for me. But if you if you would, then I'd be very grateful because I don't care if I only get if I get a thousand or a thousand and one and that's it. No one ever joins after that. But it would just be really useful for doing little lives on my phone because obviously I can't can't do that at the moment. Um, I, yeah. And I could do a bit more varied content, I suppose. But now I've discovered how to do sales videos. <laughs> Who knows? I think that probably probably helps a bit because I'm then I'm not just saying, showing what I've got. I'm showing that I do actually sell some of this stuff sometimes. Um, I've not had a bad day today, actually, but four sales, but nice ones. Um, quite happy with that. 
And what I'm doing at the moment is I've got some stuff that somehow slipped through the mis listing net. It either was listed and dropped off or it didn't get listed because it fell through my entire lack of systematic way of doing things. And uh, so I'm kind of revisiting it and making sure that stuff goes on. Um, and once that's done, then then everything sort of starts to fall into place a bit more. But it's amazing how much stuff seems to drop off eBay. It certainly has done for me. And some of this stuff is possibly <clears throat> possibly a year old because I didn't know it wasn't there until I did a stock take earlier this summer. Uh, so, yeah, it's taken me a long time. A long, long, long time. <laughs> what happens when I get to a 1,000? Oh, hello, Michaela Purdy Vintage. A lovely name. Um, it's uh, when you get to a 1,000. Sorry, I'm having a slight problem with lighting here. Oh, um, black cat in the corner. There we go. Right, when you get to a 1,000, Michaela, what happens is you're allowed to do live um, videos on YouTube with your phone. Currently, what I do is I'm doing it on my laptop, uh, but I can't do it on the phone. It's a, it's something they bought in earlier this year to stop people filming awful things, I guess, that are far more offensive than me lurching around the charity shop. Um, but that's the sort of new ruling. So, yeah, that's that's the only reason I, I'm kind of in, interested to see if I can get there, because, because it'd be nice to be able to do live things when I'm out and about, and particularly when we have the meetup. So I hope that answers your question. Is everyone listed today? Um, I've I've got some photos to match up with listings and, and schedule, but I, I it's 10 live, 10 new items live a day, 10 new auctions a day, and I'm always take and I take stuff off that's not going anywhere, pop it to one side and decide if I'm going to send it to auction or get rid. So um, I'm sort of doing that because I'm getting much more see we've got sunshine now. It's never there when you want it. There we go. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to create activity all the time. Um, so far, it seems to be working, but the problem with eBay is when the eye of eBay goes off you, it's gone and you're left high and dry and having tumbleweed days. So um, currently, yeah, they appear to be taking some uh, notice of me and I seem to be getting some sales. I don't look at views and and things like I just don't because it upsets me I don't really even look at watches I'm just interested in getting sales and getting stuff out there um I had someone actually contact me and ask me if I'd taken off on three items but they were actually asking for what would have amounted to a 25 percent discount which is quite hefty on because it was quite good items so I've kind of gone back to them through the email rather than making an offer. And I've gone back and said, look, I could, the lowest I could do for these three things together is this. Let me know if you're interested. I can do you a special listing and then you won't get clobber for postage three times. And that will save some money. So I'm waiting to hear back from them. But it's two very nice pairs of boots and, and a vintage dress. Um, obviously a very petite lady because they're very small boots. And the dress is minuscule. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that their purse is large and that they say yes. You've got 100 days unlisted, 100 items unlisted, sorry, Lex. Yeah, busy day tomorrow. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, the thing is, I sometimes think having a little bit of fallback stuff, if you can't get out to source because, I don't know, you've got a bad cold or something happens, is not a bad thing to have a little bit of a cushion, if you like. Um and I, yeah, my cushion is actually jewellery. I have got quite a lot of jewellery that I have been collecting and I've only listed very few items because it's sort of like a safety net if I can't or don't want to or I'm unable to go out and source for some reason. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm up to sort of 1,500 odds, so uh, that's pretty much what it is. Right, I'm just going to go and open the door and let my son in. I'll be back. Talk amongst yourselves. Oops.
And I'm back in the room. Sorry about that. Really bad fault to give anyway, isn't it? <laughs> he has his own key, but I don't know. He just likes me to let him in. Who knows? <laughs> oh, slimming world. You stayed the same, though. That's all right. That's all right, Kelly. It's not It's not gone on, which is a good thing, because, you know, we're winter approaching. I think the tendency is for us to sort of stockpile a bit, isn't it, in terms of the body. A hundred in a day. Well, I'm, I'm just I'm just clicking back and having a little look here. Ooh. Well, so you have been busy. Photographing a painting, some Ikea bag of baby clothes and photograph two bundles. Absolutely rubbish. <laughs> well, you've done something. And there are days, I don't know, when you just don't feel like doing anything. You've had a lot going on. So, you know, sometimes work can be a good distraction and a good thing to just get into. And other days it's just, it's not happening. Hello, Anne Pennicott. <laughs> Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> nice to have you here. I'm, I am very lucky where I live. I mean, I'm down south, which means things can be expensive. But because I've been doing this for a while, uh, I think I've been about four years now. I'm going up to about four years doing this properly, as, you know, trying to, trying to make it a, a business, making it a business. It is a business. Um, and I've, I've, I've kind of learned where to go and where not to go and I look out for things like jumble spells and sale days and and things like that if I if I went to some of the charity shops I've got in my town I mean the, the prices are silly they will charge you 10 pounds for a very ordinary dress and you know six pounds for a very dull shirt or blouse and and, and I'm very rarely going to make money on those unless it's some incredible brand that they've missed and I do stealth brands i do find things that they just don't know about but that's hard work and it's, it takes a lot of time i have a lot of charity shops in my town there's about 14 of them i think at the last count but i've got ones i like and i've got ones i go to and you know i don't have any special privileges they're not holding stuff for me or letting me in the back or god i wish they would but they just don't do that um but yeah and I and I sort of broadening what I buy as well. I'm mostly clothes, but I love other things too. Anything that's weird and wonderful and a bit strange. <laughs> so you will see odd things. <laughs> They're all out there somewhere. It's just being lucky and finding them really. And I've never done auctions. So that's a whole new area I haven't explored. So you've lost two and a half pounds, pound girl. Well done, Cheryl. That's brilliant like you say without doing anything <laughs> but um you know things like having little targets and goals like that can can be useful but let's say if, if the weight doesn't shift so what <laughs> you get there we all get where we're going eventually it just takes time doesn't it so i'm clicking down through here <laughs> oh, okay. oh chat's going on here item specifics yeah, there is this thing about item specifics, and I'm still slightly clueless because I'm kind of thinking that surely it's going to pop up if you go into your listings and and just to see, just to try and edit the first 500. It's, if there's something that's wrong, it's, it's surely it's going to do that horrible little exclamation mark in a red circle, which I hate to see. Um, but maybe there's got to be some way because I can't go through 1,500 listings piddling around with the description. So. Yeah, I'm just going to hold my horses and wait and see. <laughs> too much pizza. There's no such thing as too much pizza. Ketober, proper clean as I can. Keto for a month. Well, Lex, good, good on you. I've looked into keto, and I think if I was just feeding me, I could probably do it. But I kind of, I'm sort of lowish protein as it is. Um, but um, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really set up for it to be honest. I don't know it's a. Mm, I just yeah I like to munch, <laughs> but really good. So there's one on Netflix. Ah, it is interesting. It's interesting the fact there's conflicting evidence every time there's a study that says one thing, and everyone takes it on board, and then there's another one that sort of counters it, and and I, I find it quite interesting. Now, so you're living on tuna and. I'm assuming that's chicken. 
<laughs> Tuna and chicken. Two easy things, I think. Easy to cook. Chicken, yes, it is. Right. Box the size. Oh, good for you. I can sort of manage yoga, but that's about as far as I can get. They don't always let me know when there's a sale on. Um, sometimes they produce little sheets. Their website is, the websites are often useless. Um, a lot of the charity shops don't really have sales. Um, some of them do, and some of them will put a little sheet out saying when in the month things are going to happen. Half the time I've gone into that shop and said, oh, you're having a £2 day today. And they're like, oh, are we? I show them the look up and think, oh, yeah, we are. So I'm like, phew. <laughs> um, yeah, but like I said, so it can be a little bit hit and miss, but I know that they are so overloaded with donations. They are literally drowning them. They've got them, you know, things like where the changing room is absolutely stacked to the roof with black bin bags and, and they can't even get, get through it all. It's very sad. But I think a lot of people have been having clear outs. So I'm deeply grateful for that, especially when they give away hobs, <laughs> beautiful jackets. Uh, you're hungry doing Weight Watchers. I, uh, yeah, there's different things, isn't there? Weight Watchers, Slimming World, and they all seem to have slightly different takes on what they think is going to work. And I think different body types and people are individuals. One size doesn't fit all, particularly in terms of what you need to nourish yourself. So it's really, I think it's very tricky uh, for a lot of people. I, can't, I really can't speak. It's not something I have a lot of experience of, I'm afraid. So I, um, but I can see it's a real struggle for some people, and and it's it's strange how how a body can hang on to weight even when you're not eating much. It's, it is odd. So you've stayed with your calories, Lainey, within the last three weeks. You're looking forward to Chinese messages. <laughs> yeah, you've got to have you've got to have something to look forward to, otherwise it just becomes tedious, really. Ah. I wonder when they're going to actually tell us. I might try that later, Karin. Um, I think I tried it a while ago when they first announced it and just got absolutely nowhere. It just wasn't having it. The zero stuff. Yeah, I have to know what the zero stuff is. But what's that sort of lettuce and celery? <laughs> yeah, I, do, I don't, I'm not overly fond of salads myself. I mean, I don't mind, but I like hot food and I like quite high protein food. I'd rather have less of it. That's a food. Karen, you cannot skip lunch. Yes, be told. Auntie Sue is telling you, Karen, you cannot skip lunch. <laughs> Especially if you skip breakfast. <laughs> Oops. Oh, is that just me? <laughs> Water, is that the only thing that's um zero? <laughs> it's the only thing that's zero. Love it. I I am um, it's all news to me. I know occasionally I see the is it Weight Watchers that do the those funny little machines that calculate points it's all a mystery to me but i sell them if i find them cheap enough god i've been waffling for ages i yeah dear oh dear <laughs> i'm sure some of you have work to do or something else to be doing um yes i've got some packing up to do clearly photography doesn't work for me because the minute the sun does this and gets low you get a difference in the light coming through the window so i, I have to wait from wait till tomorrow after about 10 o'clock in the morning, and then I can photograph. <laughs> hey, that's my excuse. I, I'm going to stop matching pictures up to um, to the drafts I've done, I think. Uh, I've had a problem with my phone in that I can't upload from my phone my photos onto the computer, which is what I used to do. So now I'm trying to put them on. I add them on in, in the eBay app, and then I go into my computer and fiddle with them because I, I can't be doing with it soups lovely oh now that sounds nice this kale thing that does sound good burgers manchego cheese which is lovely uh courgette crisps and kale for tea that does sound good i like the idea of keto food it kind of appeals to me soup 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 and dust isn't it dust isn't that what the, no that's that comedy thing isn't it mm. you want to put Ah, you want to put something on auction? It flagged up a missing specific. Ah, okay, so maybe the bulk edits will show us. I'm going to try that, maybe tomorrow. Um, is manchego cheese cheese and mango? No, Lainey, no. It's a hard cheese. It's Spanish. Um, it's often eaten as a tapas with um, membrillo, which is the quince cheese, which isn't cheese at all. I like manchego cheese. I'm not a cheese fan, but it's quite nice to nibble on. It's really salty. Quite tasty. 
<laughs> or you can fry it. I didn't know you could fry manchego. I tell you what I do like, and that's halloumi cheese fried. Oh God, that's heaven. That it's just lovely. <laughs> Salty, but lovely. Anyway, we're on to food now, and I'm supposed to be making a vegetarian um, a shepherd's pie. I've done the lentils, but I need to, I was trying, thinking I might go and get some corn mince to put in it, just to give it a bit more of a texture that's a bit more like a meaty one. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give that a whirl. I've made them before, but I can never remember how I do them. And I make a, a big one, and then I end up freezing it. So, cheese Doritos. Oh, wow. That, that sounds that sounds good, Lex. That sounds very good indeed, because we all like cheese Doritos. <laughs> I don't have them in the house because, A, I wouldn't get looking because my son would fight me for them. Um, so I'm going to go now. It's been lovely to chat with you all and to, and to waffle and burble. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope you all have a good evening. I hope you get done what you need to get done. And no doubt I'll be watching somebody's lives later or tomorrow. Steak, you jammy, Karen. Karen. Oh, why do I do that? Because I've got a friend called Karen. Anyway, <laughs> so bye bye all. Enjoy your steak. <laughs> Have fun. Take care now. I'm ending the broadcast. I am. I'm trying to. Yes, I am. Bye. <laughs>